Welcome to the Chasm Review. Today, I am joined by a very special guest. I am reviewing the EP Invisible Monsters by the Adelaide-based artist Falter. And joining me right now is Falter himself. Hey, everyone. How are you? It's so cool to have you here, my friend. Um, I'm so keen to delve into this EP with you to not only review it, but just get some insights behind the EP, behind the songs. This currently is probably my favorite EP release of the year so far. So oh, I am rearing to go. I've got the hat, I've got the shirt. So let's yeah. dig straight into it, man. It's at this point I know this world. There's so much like emotion and just like fortitude around the EP. Is there like any sort of like certain storyline or theme throughout the EP that you sort of have in mind? Or is it just sort of like, you know, a few songs, yeah. like as in like different songs and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So I guess um I mean it's a little bit of an adventure and I think you can sort of get a sense of that with the songs. They're sort of um very different to one another, which is which is nice. But I guess the main reason for that is because um like the first track, Break Me Down, was probably well, yeah, it was the first track I sort of wrote in terms of thinking about Falter and um with my producer Rowan mm. um which was great so uh, obviously Dark Side was the first single but um Break Me Down was done at that sort of same time oh, so wow. that was probably yeah maybe four three or four years ago so um and then you take that to the next track which is Suffocating which mm. was written within the last year so yeah, right. um yeah and then um yeah so all of them are written at different times um but I guess because you know what it's like as well you sort of as a band and as a musician you tend to release um singles yeah and you know that sort of thing and so I've done a lot of singles in between but um you know I sort of wanted to release a collective of songs um and it was it was quite fun to sort of merge them all together because yeah so Break Me Down and I Don't Care were done um very early on and oh, right. so, yeah, that's too. okay the, yeah yeah and then um so I don't care I actually wrote that maybe 10 years ago so oh wow um so that was actually yeah. sort of when I was in my old band and I was kind of starting to write whole songs myself um because I was sort of you know wasn't confident as that I'm mainly a, obviously a vocalist mm. um and so yeah so then um suffocating and hear me um then I swear that I think there's another track that I'm forgetting. Only to blame. But only to blame, of course. Yeah. The middle. The so, middle. Yeah. So <laughs> those three songs were written later on. Um, which yeah, which is which is cool. So it sort of went, yeah, break me down, I don't care. And then it was only to blame, which was mm. probably around the same time as Had Enough when that single came out. Yeah, of course, um, right. Yeah. yeah. And then suffocating and hear me were the two latest tracks that we worked it's, on it's so fascinating just like the facts because i mean I, I we've obviously both been through this obviously you've just been through this with your ep but it's so fascinating when you can really just grab songs from whenever from any timeline and just like kind of stick them together with other songs i mean i wouldn't yeah. have suspected for a second that you know break me down and i don't care we're from like 10 years ago i would have been like oh man these are just brand new songs that he's just whipped up but when you yeah. put them all together with all the other songs it's like they all sound so cohesive all together that it's just like wow like it, it, it just seems like they're all done at the same time and a lot of people kind of think that especially i think when you do listen to albums and releases and stuff is like oh you know this new band's released 12 different songs they just seem like it's a massive collective of you know most recent yeah. songs but they're not like they're just from they're from like the present present day they're from like maybe like a couple of years ago some can be from way yeah. back in the archives man like way way back that you've yeah, just dug 100%. up and like i yeah. love that i love that your ep does that it's a, it's a very like i mean i know a lot like he's of new metal bands and like you know classic like bands that we listen to that have done that with previous yeah. tracks and so i love that your ep also has that um that, that <laughs> yeah. flair to it too <laughs> So I guess like that's kind of why I called it Invisible Monsters as well because I sort of thought about like conceptually what all the songs were kind of about and they're all, as you know, very different songs but mm -hmm. each of them kind of deal with, I guess, mental health in a general sense or in different mm -hmm. ways. Um, and okay. so 
you know, invisible monsters for me means, you know, those those demons and those things that you can't see, but they're scarier than real literal monsters that you can yeah. see, you know what I mean? So exactly um, right. that, yeah, and that's kind of why I like when I designed the cover, I just had, you know, that old old school kind of bed sheet ghost looking thing, yeah. but there's nothing underneath, so you can't see feet coming out. So mm. it's kind of creepy, but it's like plays on that, you know, innocent kind of funny thing that you do mm. as kids where you throw a sheet over and cut some holes in it, whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah. So I it's do kind love of... that. Uh, I love that that you did that for your first EP because we did that for ours as well. We had like the red oh, ghost. Really? We're like the red ghost monster as well. And then you had like the oh, white God, sheet really? ghost monster. We should have a th- we should do a thing where they coincide. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I haven't even seen that. Oh my God, how good's that? Yeah, no, nah, I, I loved. I loved when I first saw the thing. I'm like, oh hell yeah, he's going for the white sheet monster. That's so because ours originally <laughs> was white. And then yeah. I was, and then I was like, nah, I want it to be a different color. So I was like, nah, we'll throw some red, we'll make it, make it red. So I love that yeah, there's like sick. that contrastingness between the two. But even yeah. so, I love to jump in to the track by track. Let's go into yeah. break me down because, like, as you said, that's one that you yep. wrote quite a while ago. I do love it mm-hmm. as the first track, especially with like that CD tape recorder, like that tape effect um how it starts off like (laughs) real just oh man it's awesome but yeah take me through that track yeah sure so i guess um obviously to start off with all the tracks were recorded and produced by my producer rowan chikowski at head of studios so huge props to him for working on the tracks with me um i guess break me down was super funny because obviously the songs were written at different times i think one of the hardest things um you know especially for rowan and myself was to sit down and have like suffocating already released mm. um and nothing else was released and so we kind of had one bass track and we we're like well we have to make all the other ones work with this track and mm. so we revisited those project files like break me down and we had to really kind of go is this going to work with this track or whatever and so break me down originally had maybe like a minute a minute 15 or something of guitar intro um which i ended up cutting um and just changing for the record player um nice. because um it was sort of um yeah funny conversation because that i guess when i wrote that i was playing um and writing most of that sort of guitar and so there was a lot of basic guitar just chuggy kind of static hexy kind of vibe stuff at the start and obviously when um you know i started having rowan write more of the guitars he's he's a natural he's a, he is a guitar player and that's what he does and he's an incredible musician at what he does and so um you know letting his guitar styles come into the songs more is better for everybody because you know um and so when we were looking back at those older songs i was like oh you know this isn't holding up as well the stuff that i you know wrote at the start of this song and so we got that sort of stuff um but then you can sort of still hear the bits that I write, basically anything that's more simple, you're like, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, nice. It comes <laughs> um, out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I guess "Break Me Down" was kind of, I literally just wrote it as a high energy track, um, and that that was really all I wanted in mind. Um, and so lyrically, I was just thinking about, you know, that kind of essence of, you know, just having those kind of fights with yourself, and you know, others, and kind of people bringing you down and that sort of thing but then also sort of how you fight that back and how you sort of come back from that and so um that's why it's kind of positive in that sense it's kind of um you know like it's not a depressing song at all it's Mm. really sort of uplifting but yeah um yeah i guess i literally was just like i i need to write something that's you know a bit of high energy a bit more, you know, that like, I hate to use it, but like happy metal sound. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of... Opens up the um, opens up the whole release like really, really well. I did also want to yeah. ask, like, the near the back end of the track, there's like a riff that comes in. Are they bagpipes, or is that just like a really like different guitar riff, like that just sort of plays at the end, like like at like the outro of that track? Uh, definitely not bagpipes, but, um, yeah, I wish they were. That'd be cool. <laughs> it sounds, when I first heard it, I was like, wait, what the, that sounds like bagpipes. I was, for a second, I thought you were doing like a corn tribute or something. I was like, what? No way. <laughs> and then like, as it got yeah. toward the end, I'm like, no, nah, it has to be guitar. I don't know what he's done, but it sounds yeah, sick. Yeah. It sounds awesome. Yeah. That's like the guitar solo. And it probably sounds weird because 
we ended up bringing it into the like chorus the last chorus oh yeah and yeah. so it's, it's like super different to other choruses um yeah so it's like a guitar solo that rowan wrote and yeah and that was probably yeah that was four years ago Wow. And so, you know, Rowan's doing this happy, you know, guitar <laughs> solo. And I think we were both like laughing because, you know, I was like, all of the songs, like, I'm really good at writing depressing stuff. <laughs> so I was like, we got to bring something in that's going to, you know, yeah. lift up the audience before, you know, we hit them with the heavy stuff later. Oh, man. You did very well with that. <laughs> like Suffocating. Yeah. That's a, like, you know, I just said, first single released fucking you put out a video 10,000 views of the video just it just if you were ever going to build hype and build like a really great foundation to start with this release this was the perfect song to do it on in my opinion yeah awesome thanks man no i appreciate it um suffocating is a super personal song to me and um you know definitely one of my favorite tracks for sure um i guess i sort of wrote that around the last referendum that happened and like you know those mm. people audience that don't know like i'm an orangery man proud aboriginal man and so the i guess that referendum time was super hard mentally um because you know it's like 2024 now and you know we're still kind of fighting these notions of being accepted and that sort of thing and so um i guess and going back to the whole theme of the ep i when i write my lyrics i I obviously have my own connection, my own story to what I'm writing, but I like to write them generally enough that people can bring their own experiences and, you know, thoughts about it, you know, because if people, if it's general enough, most people can connect in some sort of way. And so I guess I've sort of written the song in terms of, you know, from that perspective of feeling like an outsider mm. and kind of, you know, what is, what is that? You know, that's, that's why the lyrics are like, what could it be surrounding me? You know, kind of yeah. thinking about this, this um, darkness and then, you know, actually it's coming from inside of me, but why is there? So, you know, um, it is, it is a really sort of intense song for me. And, you know, mm. like that, that whole sort of period of time, that few months, I was kind of questioning, you know, like what is going on with this country mm. and why, you know, like why, why is everybody kind of having a say on, you know, um, you know just our thing you know and yeah. so it was it was mentally like a really hard time and so um yeah that song is kind of i guess the the product of that um originally musically it was um something that rowan was working on um like the um actual riffs side of things and mm -hmm. um basically uh, sort of after that um lincoln park song lost came out yeah um, right That's and right. i think yeah yeah and i think that was kind of a day that all of us rejoiced you know it was yeah like, yeah well, we got you know we got more linker park and that's great and so rowan yeah. was super inspired by that musically mm -hmm. um and yeah and so when i sort of heard that sort of main riff and the do 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 you know those keys mm -hmm. um rowan showed me that when i walked in and i was like this is sick let's build a song from this sick. um you know and yeah i sort of wanted those dropouts where it sort of went to piano um, so I could do some more feelsy stuff and mm. yeah, sort of talk about that. But yeah, yeah, and I, yeah, I definitely urge people to read the lyrics because they're probably it's probably my favorite song lyrically. It is. There are some really good lyrics in there, man. I I also when I first heard it, like I just knew straight away. I was like, man, this is something else. Like this is just like the next level of your stuff. Um, oh, because cheers. yeah, like from the lyrical perspective for sure, but even from like, you know, the singing perspective, like there's so many more cleans in this song as well. That really took me by surprise. Yep. But the fact that you do, you do them so well, and even the screams on top of them are just so much, they're just, again, just next level. And so like literally when Thanks. it came out, I was like, oh man, if there's like a bunch of songs to come or like an EP, an EP to come from this, it's gonna be like this next level kind of stuff, which was <laughs> very, very exciting. I've lost And that's another really yeah. that's another really cool song man it's like it seems really down to earth and again quite emotive as well i love the breakdown yeah. in it. it's probably one of my favorite breakdowns um yeah with your cool. screams again just coming in real full real impactful man like take me through that one yeah yeah sure yeah so only to blame is super um super different song because i think i was sort of thinking about um in terms of just vocal delivery I was kind of inspired by a lot of different bands at that time and that and you you'll definitely riff off of this it was when sort of like lowest in me by stain came out oh and, yeah you know, 
that, yeah. you know, that single, I was like, shit. Like, I had yeah. that on repeat for, like, a month. And, yeah, it's you true, know, yeah. It's, yeah, like, those... If, if, and if, so if you go back and listen to the verses, you can kind of really hear that I'm sort of thinking about just stained kind of in their, um, you know, in their sort of prime. And even now, um, just the kind of slower vocals and that build up and, mm. um, you know, that the, the emotive nature of kind of, you know, how Aaron Lewis kind of delivers those those vocals. And so I was super inspired at that time. Um, but I guess in terms of the song, it was... A funny one because I was sort of going through a bit of a, I guess, like a health transition in terms of just how I look after myself and that sort of thing. And so yeah. it was not too long after I played with Power Man 5000. It was just after that I sort of That's right, yeah. sat back. Yeah. And like, so basically, like, I'm like a year and a half sober now. So it's sort of like from, from that, um, I was sort of like, having a few drinks every now and then and like you know and I was like this isn't actually doing me good so um and that's why it's like you know only to blame um you know if you think about the things that we're kind of doing to ourselves but then you know there's always this kind of romanticized side of life where you're kind of like woe is me and then you know you have to look in the mirror and kind of go actually like I can change this shit around yeah um you know and so um yeah and so that was kind of I guess the general crux of the song I sort of wanted to just think about you know looking in the mirror and thinking about bad habits and kind of breaking them down um and you know um getting rid of them and so mm. yeah that song sort of helped me through that sort of period so yeah that's awesome man yeah i i know all about the bad habits i will i'll go back on the start i don't want to do, do too many tangents in this but like yeah, when, sure. <laughs> when cycle of hurting came out that was fucking i was yeah that was the song that i just had on repeat in london whenever yep. i walked to work across the thames i'd be like i'd listen to that real deep that, that, that scream that he does in that like bridge part uh heading into yeah. the final chorus like sick um but yeah. yeah no i completely agree with like the the whole bad habit thing and being only to blame that was a big thing for me especially when i went over to london because like you know it was almost like a bit of a fresh start but then it's kind of like yep. you know it's that that uh um that saying of like you know you can sort of go wherever you want to but like your bad habits are with you so they follow you wherever you go and that's exactly what happened yep. like I was like, yeah, fresh start, awesome. But then it's like, oh my God, yeah. I'm drinking all the time because now there's bars everywhere around me. So this is yeah. actually getting worse. <laughs> yeah. And it is like, yeah. oh shit, why am I feeling so down? I'm in a new country. It's like, because you haven't resolved your issues. <laughs> yeah, 100%. But it's like, it's hard, hey? Like you've got yeah. to like, you know, you've got to actually sit back and talk, almost have a conversation with yourself about mm. what's going on. Um, but, you know, when you actually do that, I think that's when things happen things change and you they know do. things are things are way better yeah they really do man i could not agree more yeah if there's a song in this like ep where like the shift happens it's this song in my opinion like that as soon as yep. it comes in i'm just like oh man this is different this is i mean all the other songs are like there's there's a bit of cohesiveness between them. And then when this one comes mm -hmm. in, you can tell like, oh, there's a turn coming. And I love that it's a yep. song that you wrote like a while ago because like yeah. obviously shift, like putting it into all these, all these songs, it definitely shifts the EP, but it does fit really well into what comes after it. But uh, yeah, yeah, take me through that one. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome observation because yeah, I literally wrote this song, yeah, about 10 years ago um, when I was using I think Cubase back then or something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, and and so um, obviously it's not the same files, but yeah. Um, so yeah, basically um, that song when I wrote it, I wrote, I guess, like I, I had the whole track when I went to Rowan, same with Dark Side. So that were the two songs that I had in my back pocket when I first started with Rowan. And so I don't care. I really wanted to make it work because it, it was so original to just what I was doing before and kind of I, I thought about the two songs as kind of my transition out of the band that I was doing before into mm. a solo thing mm. um and yeah so I guess one of the reasons why it is so different is probably because 90 percent of the music is written by me mm. um you know including all the guitars and so that's why it's kind of super simple moody um and I I guess I was super into you know Cradle of Filth and Marilyn Manson and all those kind of things where you know yeah. they're sort of dark and creepy and slow mm. um and I, I was really interested in kind of mixing that with the high energy stuff and the emotional stuff um mm. and i guess 
uh, yeah, it's a super funny song because I had everything kind of there. Mm. And then um, when I came to revisiting it, I only had vocally and lyrically the chorus done. Right, um, okay. And I, I wrote that chorus a long time ago. And I guess, you know, people, you know what people like, we grow and, mm. you know, and I'm I'm not as angry as I used to be. Yeah, so course, yeah. uh, looking, looking back at that track, I was like, you know, really had that those angry lyrics and, you know, that sort of... Um, yeah, I guess when I listen to the original tracks of my vocals mm. from back then, it's almost um, confronting because they're super intense and super raw. Mm. Um, and funny enough, they weren't, um, obviously, they weren't good enough to match the production quality of everything else yeah. because I'm using SM7B now and things like that. And so mm. I had to try and recreate those vocals, um, yeah. you know, with the new gear. And so... That was challenging because I still I really love the old takes because mm. you could almost like hear that the pain in the chorus yeah know? like the there was kind of yeah and that was kind of I guess uh, essence of what I was going through at that time which That's again awesome. ten years ago lot you know twenty one like a long time ago so yeah. um a lot different then you know um yeah and so I was sort of sitting in this very office and I was like you know what can I kind of do lyrically for the rest of this song um and i wanted to do something very different to the rest of the ep and obviously the rest of ep i was kind of just thinking about myself and my experiences and how i can relate to other people and mm -hmm. this one i was like maybe i'll take a conceptual approach and do something different and so i sort of started thinking about like my favorite horror movies and that sort of thing and you know trying to see how i can relate the lyrics i had to a specific character and then i built the rest of the song from that and so oh, conceptually the, the song is kind of about jason Voorhees story <laughs> so <laughs> awesome um, so yeah once you kind of know that and you go back and read the lyrics there are little hints that i I've will in the, now do that so <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of about you know how he was um obviously bullied and then isolated and left alone mm. um you know and that's but like, you know, obviously why he comes back and kills everyone. So there's yeah, a yeah. lot of kind of anger in that sort of story. But, you know, there is a lot of emotion in that in that sense, because, you know, so, yeah, it was kind of it was a weird, weird thing. But I was just like, man, like I'm a metal musician. Fuck it. Let's write, write the rest of the that. song about this. Yeah, no, I love that. I think probably my <laughs> most, I mean, obviously I love the thing, the fact that like it's based off Jason and that sort of thing. One thing that I, one thing that I really do love from that is the fact that despite the fact that you've obviously grown so much since you've written that song you still kept the same chorus as it was because there's a lot of people yep. that as they grow with their music their music changes and they're like oh well this is, wasn't what i was now so i'll change this to this whatever so i yep. really love the fact that you kept the same chorus and that you you made it your mission to try and recreate it the best way you could based off the, the yep. way that you did it back in the day um, yeah. yeah, I think that's I think that's fantastic, and I think it, uh, yeah. It, it, yeah. I, yeah, I think it does it real good justice because like I don't know if I could ever hear you sound much more angrier than that, but like you did a very good job. <laughs> 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 so like the next song, which is "Hear Me," and that's where mm -hmm. like this I heard this song for the first time when you opened for Wednesday Thirteen, and I was just like, <laughs> oh, what is this like this is next level like when you come in with that verse i was like oh this is, this is, i can't wait for this song to come out um yeah, and, cool. <laughs> and like again it's it's that real like it's that real heavy real fast like it's almost like a stepbrother of like i don't care like with this real like yeah i mean it's in your face kind of attitude but just sort of like you know sped up into more of an energetic kind of feel and it sounds like yep. a more aggressive version of the first song, which is so cool because that started the EP. Now this song yeah. ends it. Like it's yep. brilliant. Take me through it. Yeah, for sure. Nah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, "Hear Me" was actually like just such a super fun song to write. Um, I guess it was sort of after suffocating, and obviously suffocating was like, um, you know, really. Yeah, we were really happy with that. And so it was kind of hard to kind of write after that and kind of go, all right, we still have to do something that's going to complement this track. And also, um, you know, when when we wrote it, I wasn't thinking about it being the last track either. It was kind of just a funny thing. Um, you know what it's like once you've got the collective of songs together and you sort of hear them as a collection, you actually start going, OK, these ones would make sense in this sort of, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, what do you call it? timeline or whatever 
Um, but yeah, I guess Hear Me was, um, yeah, it was so much fun. Just thinking about like, I was listening to a lot of hip hop, a lot of Twisted and, mm. um, you know, bands like that. And I love bringing kind of the rappy kind of elements into the metal as well. Mm. Um, obviously, new metal does that so well. And so I was sort of thinking about that and the screams. And so, yeah, I mean, when we sort of sat down, I just said to Rowan, I was like, he's like, how do you want to start this next song? I was like, just give me a riff that's like, and then so he just takes like all of my voice notes like that and turns them into the riffs, you know, um, which was super cool. Um, because once we had that, it was so funny. We wrote the rest of the song and then we were like, Hang on, we didn't use that riff again. It was just the main riff. And I was oh, like, yeah. right, put it the- <laughs> So I was like, okay, put it at the end. <laughs> so oh, it's like, yeah. It's like the bread of the whole sandwich, and the rest of the songs just like all different. I, so, love, that I, did, um, I love that I didn't notice that until you just told me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now you'll go back and you won't hear it until the end. It's like mm. super funny. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess, uh, again, like I was sort of thinking, generally in terms of my lyrics and things that I've been through and just kind of wanting to keep that one super general and heavy and not take it overly serious um, because, yeah, I just wanted something that, you know, an audience can relate to, um, you know, and it's just about being heard, um, I guess, and that's why it's called Hear Me. So, um, yeah, it's just basically trying to get a message across and that sort of thing and being able to accept someone for their voice and, um, wanting to be heard so yeah but lots of lots of different lyrics and um, funny little things in that song for sure but yeah and the film clip was such a, a great um, adventure as well so yeah. that was supported by the Port Adelaide Council which was great um, and we filmed it in like a in Confessions which is like a sort of underground uh, cabaret sort of club which oh, was wow, super okay. Yeah, yeah, super different for a metal scene. And so we set it up as, you know, obviously that kind of mobster looking vibe. Um, and, Sick. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, did a lot of drone footage out in the port. Um, yeah, it was such a fun, um, such a fun two days, two day shoot. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. No, I, I, I really enjoyed that video. And like, it's so good that you're able to do so much with both, like, obviously with the suffocating video, but also with the Hear Me video as well. Like, just yep. being able to really let your creativeness like you know sort of come through and you know make a story out of it to suit the song and you're very good at doing that so like i mean you've obviously got previous videos as well but yeah those ones yep. for me they're yeah i think everyone as well sort of just realized that yeah these are just like next level like videos for you guys and it yeah, added it so much added so much to the tracks too yeah for sure no nah, thanks so much man like as as a visual artist, I think so much about the visuals, and yeah, it was such a such a fun adventure. Those film clips, for sure. You've got such an amazing EP here, um, and it's just as I said, it complements the songs complement each other really well, and even the the lyricism and the meanings behind the songs. I think they really do relate to a lot of people and a lot of different sort of um walks of life i suppose but like you know it, it's it's heartfelt it's emotional it's impactful it's like there's there's so much around it um it's what well, as i said it's my it's my favorite ep of the year so far um that i go to that i listen to um i think it's absolutely brilliant so i really do commend you on just being able to fucking write these songs and like bring out as you said bring the new in with the old and just sort of bring it out together i think that's fantastic yeah. and i'm really looking forward to seeing like you know what you guys do next because like you know the, as i said when that first song came out i was like oh man this is like next level so like who knows what's going to be when you guys put out your next song but yeah, yeah. You've, got an, you've got an amazing ep <laughs> here man so i can tell you that right now awesome thank you so much man i really appreciate your kind words like yeah means a lot it really does first ep so mm. super stoked and yeah i've definitely um got some songs coming for sure the next one's gonna be a super heavy fun song oh hell yeah <laughs> well to all my listeners please do uh follow falter and his music journey listen to invisible monsters obviously available on all the streaming platforms that sort of thing and watch 
Well, the, go to YouTube, watch the videos. They are just absolute masterpieces. You'll absolutely love them. And obviously, <laughs> with this, there'll be also the recorded version uh, for audio as well on the podcast through Chasm Converse, so you can listen to that as well. Um, or you can watch this one that we're doing right now. So either one is perfect. But either way, thank you so much for joining me, Falta. Um, and I really hope that uh, you see how much your EP is really, like, you know, I think helped a lot of people. And also, like, inspired them to, like, you know, go and do their own music and really, like, you know, make themselves the best people that they can be. Awesome. No, thanks heaps, man. I really appreciate it. And thanks so much for having me on today. Okay.